you know welcome to empowered women series and we have uh, tracy snyder with us uh, tracy in addition to many other things she has had incredible entrepreneurial journey she has brought to market a really cool product at least i believe in that product and uh, have successfully marketed it and i think i have a lot to learn from her entrepreneurial journey so that's why i'm going to ask her many many questions today i am sure you guys will learn a lot too and there is tracy hi thanks for having me pranima <laughs> it's such a pleasure to have you tracy Uh, so the first thing I want to ask you, Tracy, is tell us the story of Sans Bottle and how is it going? Sure. So uh, I came up with the idea of Sans about five years ago now, which is crazy because I had to do the math to realize that it's been already five years. But about five years ago, I was living in New York City in a small apartment with a very small fridge, and I was getting ready to go actually on a bachelorette party trip and decided to do a juice cleanse with the bride and didn't realize that when the package arrived, it was all these different juices and I had to drink them right away. But I bought them a month in advance thinking it was like your typical soda that lasts, you know, a year. So I looked on the internet just for some ideas of how to keep it fresh longer because I didn't need it for about a month. And really the only thing I found was you could throw it in the freezer, but living in New York City, having a really small fridge, it didn't really fit in the freezer. And then when I was shoving them in there, some of them exploded because they were filled to the top. So it was just kind of a mess. So a light bulb went off thinking, okay, there's the only option is to put, put this in the freezer, but there's no other solution out there. So I actually worked for the Rabbit Wine Accessories Company um, a few months prior to coming up with this idea. Um, one of the products that we developed was a wine preserver. And if you're familiar with wine preservation and wine preservers, it's basically when you open a bottle of wine, you wanna aerate it, you wanna let air in. But when you're finished with the bottle, say you only finish half of the bottle, the joke is no one ever finishes half, you usually finish the whole thing. But if you do only finish half of it, say it's just one person or you just wanted one glass, um, you want to put, you want to remove all the air. So you use a wine preserver, which basically is just a stopper and then the preserver that just um, sucks out the air and then keeps it vacuum sealed. So with the experience of working at the rabbit, I reached out to the same engineers, actually the CEO as well, and asked them if they thought, you know, this preservation would also work for smoothies and shakes and fruits and vegetables. And they said it should, let's, you know, let's test it out. So we worked on the development for about a year and came up with the SANS concept, which is essentially the same as a wine preserver, but it actually includes the lid on the bottle. So I have a, an example here and basically the pump is on, on the bottle and then this just vacuum seals the air out Whoa. and then keeps it fresh. Yeah. So after about a year of development, having absolutely no money to go to market with this, I launched a Kickstarter campaign and I did a little bit different than Kickstarter campaigns are now. There's a lot of marketing involved with Kickstarter campaigns. Basically what I did was I had a, a launch party at um, basically this little loft that I rented for super cheap in New York, locked all my friends and family in a room, showed them the product and said, okay, it's launching on Kickstarter tomorrow. I need everybody to buy one <laughs> and I need your support. And when I launched it on Kickstarter, it was crazy because the next, you know, the next day I, I launched the product and the first few orders were actually not friends and family. It was people that I didn't know. So it was really exciting to see that, you know, other people, loved the idea and it was kind of taking off and it wasn't just, you know, friends and family that I pressured to <laughs> buy one. It was actually people that were excited about it. So launched on Kickstarter. It was on there for, I believe, 45 days, raised, oh gosh, what I raised? $36,000. So it was enough to pay for the tooling for the product. So that able to tool it and get the first production run done, which was about a thousand units. 
and that fulfilled all the initial orders and then just kind of hit the ground running going to different trade shows and stuff and getting it in front of retailers and distributors so worked on that for about a year of development worked with the company about three years and then um about a year ago met a distributor out of canada and they have a relationship with different um, retailers and other distributors worldwide in countries like Japan and Hong Kong and Europe. So they took over the distribution for me. So they're licensing the Sands brand. So that's kind of where we are today. The last five so years. Cool. That, that's so cool. Like one of the things that you mentioned that when you launched the product, uh, like they were out although you did not offer it directly to a lot of people who did not know you, they bought it. That's, that's, I think, you know, the test of success of any product, I would say. Because, right. Because your angel investors or your close family, you know, buys it for different reasons. They don't buy it because the product works. So very right. reason that someone bought it outside was, you know, that was your first step of success. I always right. wonder about one thing, which is, you know, we live in a world of reviews now. There are reviews about everything, everywhere. And I wonder what happens to the entrepreneurs who put their heart, life, soul, everything into these products. And then they have to hear such terrible things about their products, which is, which is good in a way. It's feedback, but, but it could get difficult to deal with. So I am sure because I love Sans Bottle, I'm sure, you know, most of the time you get incredible feedback, but I am positive that there must be some negative feedback. So how do you deal with it? So it's very hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's especially, I started the company. It was my idea. I put my money into it, you know, my all into it for the last few years. So seeing a negative review is, is difficult to handle because you take it very personally. Um, and the reviews, you know, just being on crowdfunding and Kickstarter, I started getting reviews and comments before the product was even launched. So it's just been from day one. And it's kind of a reality these days. You know, the companies that I work with now, that I used to work with, friends and family that have different businesses, Everybody has to deal with reviews now. It's just the new reality. And people like to complain more than they want to say something positive. So it's a lot of dealing with, you know, the, the negativity. Um, but, you know, just kind of taking it with a grain of salt. Don't take it so personally over the years. That's something that I've learned. And then another thing, it really helped develop a, the product along. So, you know, say someone said something about, the glass being thin. That's something that we can improve on. It's not something that we, you know, it's just, this is the product and this is, this is it. You know, we could go back to the factory and say, Hey, the glass isn't thick enough. What can we do to make it thicker? Can we put a silicone sleeve on it? Is that going to help it be more durable? What can we do? You know, some people will complain, Oh, a 16 ounce size isn't big enough. I need something that's larger. Or I need something that's smaller. So we came out with a uh, 32 ounce version. Then we came out with an eight ounce version. And then someone that wants to use it for, say, hiking or throwing it in their bag to go, well, it's glass, you know, glass will break. So we made a, a Triton plastic version for people that want to take it on the go. So you read every single review. I think most companies do if they want to stay in business and you evolve just based on what, what the feedback is. So I think it's really helpful to just know where you can take your product because people like it and they're buying it, but there might be something that can be improved on. Wow. It, it is so cool that you are keeping this balance of being passionately, emotionally, absolutely involved in your product at the same time, keeping the objectivity to take feedback and use it to improve the product. And, you know, finally your customers lives, I would say, because in some way or the other, it's making their life so easy. It's right. Making their life easy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, you know, we're, we're all human. Sorry. We're all human. So when somebody, you know, if something happens, we're immediately, you know, customer service is a big part of our society now. So, 
sending a new sample or, or letting them try a new product. Like we're always trying to just make, make the customer happy. So I'm waiting for a new product trial. You know, if you want a guinea pig to <laughs> buy a new product, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, listening to the feedback stories and everything, it's not very easy to be an ent entrepreneur in, in many ways. Like, so I'm sure you must have faced a lot of tough situations. Does any of, you know, the toughest situation that comes to your mind on top of your head? Yeah, um, I would say the, aside from the reviews, that's pretty tough to handle. I would say um, just the rejection is very tough to handle. So with my background with working for the Rabbit Wine Accessories Company, I did have that um, knowledge of going to different trade shows. I had a lot of contacts in the industry, um, different retailers, you know, like Macy's to Walmart to Target. And having those relationships and thinking, oh, it's going to be so easy to get my product into these stores because I know, I know the buyer, I know the sales rep who knows this person. And it's not that easy to, you know, just walk in and say, okay, put my product in your store. So I think that's been, you know, the most difficult part is the nose and getting really far and almost getting into a retailer. And then last minute, they're like, oh, we changed direction. Or, you know, we don't think this is a good fit. We thought it was, or now we don't, or, you know, the buyer changes and they have a different strategy. So that's been really hard, but, you know, for every, what do they say for a hundred no's, you might get one yes or whatever the saying is. So with all the no's, you know, we, I still got on the home shopping network and was able to go on there with Randy Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg's sister, which was really cool. Um, Santa's on Good Morning America. It was in Kroger, which is the largest grocery store in the U.S., um, to Italy, which is a, a really one of my favorite grocery stores. Um, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love that store. So there's been, you know, for all the no's, there's been also really great successes and just working, being able to work with different countries. Like one of our big distributors is in Sweden. Another one's in Finland. We have one in Hong Kong. So it's just it's also been really cool to just work with people in other countries and see, you know, what their market is like and their consumers are like and how they respond to sand. So for all the hard times, there's, you know, there's still the silver lining for sure. It sounds so beautiful. It sounds like an <laughs> uh, uh, entrepreneur's dream come true. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are a lot. Let's celebrate the, let's celebrate the success for a moment. <laughs> yes. Just one. We just need one. Okay. <laughs> I know, Tracy, I obviously know that you have a full-time job, which is uh, very, very demanding. And, and you have the successful, you know, sans bottle. How do you balance these two things? Do you have hours that are like 36 hours uh, sorry do you have days that are 36 hours long yeah so it's been interesting and I feel like this has just been my lifestyle since college I always have different a lot of different jobs I'm always tackling a lot of different things so when I took the full-time job and was also working on SANS I kind of already knew how to multitask because I'm always kind of multitasking but Basically what I do now is if there's, you know, there's a lot of calls and a lot of meetings. So I'll take a call on my drive to work at lunch. I'll run and sit in my car and take a call. Um, after work on the ride home, sometimes I'll take calls. Then sometimes I have to ship bottles to customers because I still handle the, the website. So I'll go home and just pack, pack bottles sometimes um, on weekends, answering emails sometimes at work answering emails. So it's just kind of knowing when, you know, any, any chance you have to work on it. You know, it's not, it's not as demanding as it used to be because I do have assistance now and help for, for SANS, but, you know, there's still calls and, and shipments to be made. But yeah, I mean, it's, it kind of, it's nice to know that there's the security of having 
something, you know, another job, but then the fun stuff that you're really passionate about being able to do after work, it doesn't really feel like a job, you know? And as far as I have seen, you love both the things that you're doing in your life. Almost equally, you enjoy, you enjoy both of them really well. So maybe that gives, does that give you more energy? Yes, like 85% of the time. (laughs) (laughs) We'll take it, we'll take it. 85% of you is like 200%. (laughs) Oh, thanks. Um, this is for, this is for like others, like bam, bam, bam. Like obviously, you know, in this conversation, me and everybody who listened to this, uh, uh, particular interview will, will learn so many things, but I just want you to give me three things that you have learned as an entrepreneur. Okay. So I would say the first thing is perseverance and never giving up. When you're an entrepreneur and there are rough patches, it's not always gonna be perfect. You want, you're gonna to wanna to give up. And I've wanted to give up a thousand times, more than that. Um, but keep going, keep your head up, you know, know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And if you're passionate about it, other people will be passionate about it. And Maybe it's just going to take a little bit more time. You know, it took me a little bit more time. I started out on a high with Kickstarter and thought, you know, it was going just, it was just going to be the next rabbit wine accessories product, which is in, if you don't know what that is, it's, you know, wine accessories, but they're in every single retail store in or throughout the world. I mean, it's a, it's the number one brand. So, and then, you know, not hitting that and just kind of going down and then up and then down. So just, it's going to be a roller coaster, but just persevere. Don't give up. Just keep your head up and keep going. Now let's oh, uh, two more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two I, more. I, thought, <laughs> I thought I just heard one or one or two. <laughs> um, another thing is have fun with it. You know, if you're not if you're not having fun, you will be miserable, and it'll be hard to get up and work. You know, some people have a nine to five where they go into work and they're miserable. And then you start, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to start my own company and I'm going to be super happy and it's going to be fulfilling. And then the opposite happens where, you know, you do get a bad review and, and waking up in the morning is hard because you're taking it so personally. So once you can get past, you know, don't take it personally. It's the product. It's not you. It's one person, you know, just have fun. You don't know how long this ride is going to last. You get to create your own hours. You get to be your own boss. You know, you get to work from a co-working space and meet really cool people. So just have fun with it and enjoy, enjoy the ride. So that's something it's easier said than done, but you know, just try to enjoy it and remain happy and present and it'll be great. Um, and then I would say another thing is just, you, you really learn what your worth is and your capabilities. And, you know, through everything, I'm just really proud of myself. And I think that's something that every entrepreneur can, can feel, you know, through the, through the roller coaster and highs and lows, just still being really proud of yourself that you actually, you know, not a lot of people can run their own company and be an entrepreneur and successfully sell whatever they're selling or, you know, what their, what their business is. So just be, just being really proud of, you know, your journey and where you've, where you are. Because all three are so like, you can just take them and apply to a lot of things that you want to be successful in, like perseverance, have fun and be proud of yourself. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. (laughs) Now, before I let you go, the last question, which is, which, which is a very important question that many people who want to start their journey as an entrepreneur have it, which is they don't want to let go whatever it is that they're doing, whether you know it's a full-time job or a lot of different gigs and something that is right now paying their bills because in the beginning with, with any kind of startup, it's difficult to pay your bills. So they are difficult to, they, they find it difficult to take that first step towards Mm -hmm. getting started with their startup 
what would you tell them? Because I'm asking this specifically to you because many times, you know, people would advise things like, you know, oh, give up your day job. You can't have, you know, you can't be partially into something and expect yourself to be successful. And I can see that you prove them wrong. So what do yeah. you tell them? So when I started SANS, I still had a full-time job for about a year. So throughout all the development, through crowdfunding, I still had a full-time job until I got that first order that was pretty substantial then. And it was taking a lot of my time where I felt like I couldn't do both jobs anymore. Then I decided to pursue SANS full-time. Um, I mean, it took, I had to fly to Hong Kong for a business meeting while I still had a full-time job and told them I had my wisdom teeth out so I could be gone for a week. I mean, there's things that you do that you have to do. I mean, it's a hustle. So you have to do, you, you need money to survive. You need food to survive. And if you're the sole provider for yourself, which I was when I started the company, you know, you kind of have to do what you have to do. So I wouldn't recommend quitting your job until you have some sort of income coming in. And then, you know, you can do little odd jobs here and there to make money while you're still pursuing your entrepreneurship. So fun fact, I did some hand modeling when I started SANS to make money on the side, <laughs> um, which was hilarious. And I got free makeup, which was great. And it, it paid pretty well. And I would do it like once a month, but it was money to come in to help pay for expensive New York City rent. Um, I did some consulting on the side and you can go to your local um, like SBA chapter and see what kind of grants you're eligible for, which I did. And that, that helped out. So I got all of that kind of done before I fully quit any other job. So I would say, you know, keep pursuing it and know that if you're working, you know, 12 to 18 hour days just to do your full-time job and your and your dream and your entre you know, entrepreneurial dream, it's not, it's not gonna be like that forever. It's just gonna be like that until you can get yourself to where you wanna be and then quit that job immediately. But I wouldn't recommend doing it until you have some sort of income coming in, for sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you, for, uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, can I see your hands? <laughs> you know okay, that? we're in the middle of a quarantine, so they're not polished. <laughs> We are in the presence of a model. We oh need my gosh. To share. <laughs> fun, fun, embarrassing fact. It's like every time I talk to you, I get to know something new about it. <laughs> I had no clue. I had no clue that you have ever done hand modeling, which yep. doesn't, you know, after, after you said it, it doesn't sound surprising because, you know, when we started talking, I did tell you, you have pretty hands. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah it was it was a pretty interesting experience but it was fun fun story to tell fun fact thank you thank, thank, thank you for that and thank you for everything <laughs> thank you for sharing all these things with us yeah absolutely thanks for having me yeah